All right. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I know it's later in the afternoon for many of you, uh, but possibly uh, in the morning for our Hawaiian friends. Um, we're going to go through these, this material somewhat quickly, uh, but the slides will be posted and you'll have access to the recordings afterwards. Instead of taking questions at the end, I actually want you to email them to me. Uh, our email address is fleet at navalengineering.org. And that way we can get used to emailing and just whenever you have a question about fleet, feel free to send us an email. We're really responsive and we'll get back to you very quickly. If there's any concerns or issues seeing things at this point, could you chime in now? Otherwise, I'm just going to go through this slide deck and present the materials. All right, so hearing no concerns, and if there, there are, again, the recording will be posted online, and the slides will be available online, and we are always available by email at fleet at navalengineering.org. NavalEngineers.org, excuse me. Uh, so the first part of this presentation talks about why to use Fleet and exact what is Fleet and all the components of Fleet, and then the first steps for getting involved. So first, ASNI, we at the American Society of Naval Engineers have sections across the country. Uh, if you're looking for assistance with anything Fleet related, definitely contract, contact us directly. But we also have members across the country who uh, may be interested in supporting your work. So feel free to contact us if you have ideas about how naval engineers could support your efforts. So why are we doing this? Our, our purposes are uh, listed here. And, and obviously, there are two that really tie into working with STEM into the K-12 uh, schools. Advancing the knowledge and practice of naval engineering. Um, and also promoting naval engineering as a career field. So what we're trying to do is work with you and work with schools across the country so that engineering is part of the curriculum more, so we have a prepared naval engineering uh, group going forward and students can see themselves as a naval engineer as a, as a career possibility. So why, why fleet? And we've been doing this for over a year now. Uh, students love it. You, this pie chart shows that 21% uh, strongly agree that they'd recommend fleet to a friend and 72% agree with it. Um, overall, they were very satisfied with their decision to participate in fleet. But it's not just that it's a fun time that these students love it. Um, you can see the circle graph on the left shows that participation in fleet increased my interest in pursuing a STEM career. 64% uh, of students agreed with this. Seven uh, strongly agreed. Uh, but you can also see in the pie graph on the right that so many students uh, were influenced to consider naval engineering specifically as a career but we also had some very honest students that said that they strongly disagree. So we've worked with students, they've responded positively, uh, and we know that these type of materials all help them educationally across the board and then also help them from an engineering and a STEM perspective. So there's a few different ways that you can use the materials I present today. You could use them in daily instruction. This could be a unit. Um, you could use parts of it. You could pull out parts of this as supplemental resources for your daily teaching. Uh, I think the most common use case right now is, is three and four, starting a fleet club or adding fleet to a STEM club, a robotics club, something that you already have going on in your schools, um, and taking advantage of some of the grant fundings that can go along with all these activities. And you can also attend a fleet event. We, we are trying to get out in the community as much as possible, and we list all of our events at fleetengineering.org. So the, the, the bulk of the presentation is organized just like our website. So if you're finding slides that are interesting to you, 
for the vast majority of the beginning, we're going to deal with the four educators piece because it talks about fleet, the fleet curriculum, the fleet alignment, and also the grant applications under the four educators tab. The forum is becoming more and more of a real critical resource. It's where we're releasing details about updates to the software, where we have communities that can help you with bugs and uh, problems using the software, and also a great place to share successes so that we can develop a, a real strong community around this work. Um, you can download Fleet for free by clicking the fourth button and then we have a new mission HQ which discusses each of the missions and just gives you a broad overview so you can start with the design challenges and then apply the engineering design process to them. Oops. Okay. So there's kind of three aspects to what I call fleet. There's the innovative video game design competition that is the heart of fleet and the video game is exciting we'll look at a video of it shortly uh, it grabs students and then they get involved in the engineering design process in a really natural authentic way there's also after school curricula aligned to middle and high school standards and we'll address that for many of the states uh, these this curricula uses materials but as you can see in the picture it's more of a recycle bin than a intense robotics club and that's by design we want students to see that these uh, experiments are really close to things that they experience in their daily life and that they can do this work all the time and then we're also developing a suite of resources that you can use in, in different uh, classrooms. Obviously, there's a big budget component to this engineering design game. So that's a great place to practice um, integers as shown here. So we talk a lot about STEM. And, and today, obviously, we're talking a lot about technology and engineering, which are kind of the two forgotten letters of STEM. We, we hear a lot about STEM and it ends up being a science classroom. Uh, but this is something that can really support the science class work. So the science concepts already in the curriculum are a critical part of FLEET. We'll see those shortly. And the research and process skills are uh, part of what students need to work with in order to uh, play the video game and uh, in the after school curricula. They're applying the scientific method. They're using science and math measurement skills after they prototype and to evaluate their designs. And then the, you know, this is where classroom norms come into play. But when students are sharing out their findings, you can certainly have expectations for mathematical displays, mathematical statistics that tie into the on grade level expectations in those areas so that you're reinforcing those math skills in the uh, sharing out and uh, analysis components of the process. But let's put in the engineering. So. The technology. So the technology in the video game describes different scenarios that you have to engineer solutions to. And then you use the simulator, uh, which has components, and you pull the components together in different ways, uh, choosing different paths to solve that problem. And this is a great term, you know, it's a great place where terms like opportunity cost and things like that show up, uh, not in students bringing them to the table, but using the definitions and looking for a term to describe what they mean. Uh, then the technology uses fleet simulator, so this is a 100% physics simulator that uh, is authentic to what uh, industrial, uh, what naval engineers would use in their work. And students are able to see this and become experts in their own testing and design. And afterwards, students get mission data, which includes things like time and speed. Uh, also, they get cost uh, data, and there is a score, uh, which is just part of the motivational component of students striving for high scores, which gets them into the engineering process. And that's really what, why we're so excited. 
the fleet video game is engagement. The students really respond to this video game. At the last uh, Maker Fair I was at, I was by far the last person to leave because I had two students who were not going to leave my room even though the fair was over. This is something that students love, and then on this, like as a thread that they can't get away from that they really engage with is this engineering design and solving problems that naval engineers confront all the time. So here's why a, a great encapsulation of this. I apologize if that was loud for some of you, but I think that you can see that that vibes very well with the video games that students are playing and other aspects of their life. But we're going to show how this is really tying in to the engineering side of what students are expected to know and to be able to do at their different grades in middle and high school. Um, so let's get into breaking down this video game a little bit so we understand exactly what Fleet is. So first, uh, fleet scenarios describe a need. So this is the part of the technology that we we're discussing. But these objectives are part of the design process. And students work with these objectives. They start to think about words like stable and rescuing a group and being under budget as important parts of their design process. So that when they come to the dry dock and they're designing their ships, so they're choosing from categories that are shown at the very top, they have options for those design categories in the second row. The mission checklist shows some of the things that they're uh, meeting as far as the requirements for the mission and not meeting, but it doesn't, it's not a prescription on how to, be, how to build the perfect ship. It's uh, a minimum but not uh, sufficient requirements and students have a lot of different options with different rescue vessels, different engines, different rudders, things like that, and getting into the real design process of testing these things individually to see which is the best for different conditions is a critical component of their fleet work. So there are missions and there are tests like speed test and then the simulator itself provides feedback. So one thing that I like coming from an educational psychology background is that students that may get nervous when they're around a grade are getting a lot of feedback all the time from this system, but it's not as threatening. So if a student may have said that they're not a science person, uh, but they're a video game person, we might be able to pull that student back into a STEM field or a STEM uh, frame of mind. So the, the mission feedback gives you the overall feedback for the long missions, which take 15 minutes. For me, uh, someone who's good at video games can probably do them in 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, the speed tests give very specific data. There's a maneuverability test. There's a rescue test. So things that you really allow you to isolate variables and test out components. And then the 100% accurate physics simulator also shows uh, feedback like my ship is listing. So after the mission is complete you get a score, you get some statistics that help surround your score and you also get uh, evaluation throughout the game in some, other, some different ways. But when we're thinking about the engineering design process of planning, testing and prototyping, testing and evaluating, and using that data to improve this iterative design process is built into the fleet architecture so that students go through these tests, find out some new data, some new information, create solutions for those problems, and then test them out again. So it's a great way that students can start discussing about how to find a better answer and not worrying about being right or wrong, but really struggling with productively with the content in, in working with these situations.
So, fleet curricula overall really touches on all aspects of STEM. We the fleet curricula have hands-on science exploration, so some labs, and most of those are more towards the beginning of the curricula, so students can experience the the forces, uh, the different science concepts with their hands and watch uh, as, as you do lab work together. Uh, and then more towards the end of the curriculum, it really gets loaded with the, with the fleet simulator being the way to test out these things in a really authentic real world environment. So students are able to transfer what they learn in these hands-on explorations uh, to the video game as a simulator which is the technology that we're, we're really emphasizing here. Um, throughout the curricula, the first day for both the middle and high school curricula is uh, a presentation of an engineering design process, and we encourage you to have a discussion with your class to decide if that's your engineering design process or if you'd like to work together on another process. But regardless of whatever process you come up with, it's going to be something that you come back to six, seven times over the ten uh, lesson plans in each curricula because it's, the, it's how students are getting used to this process of working iteratively through solutions and taking design considerations into account and using data and not just doing math but actually using it for a purpose. So the math shows up in the budgets, the speeds and the masses. Uh, nothing is directly um, required or given feedback on the mathematics side and that's where some of the supplemental resources has come into play. So for the next five to ten minutes I'm going to go through how this aligns to different standards and I will be chopping this up later because I know it doesn't apply quite to everyone but I ordered them in a way that helps highlight different aspects of how fleet and the fleet curricula really tie into the big ideas that are central to each state's standards. And we ha are producing more of these alignment documents every day. Uh, so if you are if you or a friend are particularly interested and we, you don't have that information on our website yet, shoot me an email and we'll get to work on it and send you a document fairly soon afterwards. So I first actually want to start with uh, reading because uh, in most state standards at this point, uh, comprehension and collaboration as an aspect of speaking and listening is a part of, uh, of their standards as well as presentation of knowledge and ideas. And uh, whether this is an after school club or an in school club, we're encouraging you to allow students to work on their design solutions, but then stop, prepare some save a little bit of time to prepare a true presentation that shows their process. Uh, uh, we, uh, we want to emphasize a little bit more of the process than the solution right now just because the engineering process will be a little bit unfamiliar to these students but they can present what they were able to do, what data they found and how that made them redesign or change aspects of their design and what that new data showed and that's a great way for them to be a, get comfortable presenting in front of peers and also get f comfortable with the language of how engineers present data and why they settled on their final solution not just claiming that it is so but using scientific data mathematical displays as evidence for these decisions and the next generation science standards there's a uh, a few standards that really highlight the, the nuts and bolts of the science at play. So Newton's laws are, are laced throughout the game and we have aspects of our curricula that highlight them. I think in the middle school level we're using videos created by NBC and the NFL so this way even if it's in an after school club setting it's in an engaging format the way that these topics are displayed and discussed and then we have discussion questions afterwards so that you can really work with the content with your students and they can try it out. Uh, objects motion is going to be something that shows up in many of the state standards and certainly in the next generation standards 
and then constructing graphical displays that shows kinetic energy related to mass and speed. Uh, one great thing about these this simulator is that the numbers are really real world. You know, one of the missions expecting your boat to weigh about 465,000 kilograms, and those are numbers that we need to see in middle and high school, but we simply don't see them enough. And so this game is actually, because it's so true to life, pulling students into the types of mathematical experiences that they should, and science experiences they should have. Um, the Next Generation Science Standards also has engineering design, both in middle and high school. This is the middle school standards. Um, evaluating competing design solutions and looking at criteria and constraints. Uh, this is integral to every step of completing a fleet mission. Uh, analyzing data from tests. We talked about the feedback that the tests do generate. So th this is really uh, shows the, the good nexus between what's expected for engineering at this grade level and how fleet meets those needs. And obviously this is something that hasn't been you know in the curriculum for decades so there isn't enough resources and that's one thing I'd love to, if we could share more widely is just fleet and the fleet curricula are here to help supplement some of the existing science and STEM uh, activities in the classroom by adding in this engineering component so clearly. For the high school level, uh, we still have Newton's laws or the second law is here and using math to represent the claim about momentum. Um, we don't, we, the, there are lessons that allow you to explore this a little bit more directly. Um, you know, this, this third standard here is scientific engineering ideas to design, evaluate, and refine a device. And uh, it even uses collisions, which aren't encouraged during a fleet, but happen all too frequently. So the simulator gives you a great uh, avenue for looking at this standard. And then uh, the law of gravity. Gravity is a, a big part of both of the curricula uh, in, in its role. Um, with ships and how they float. Again, engineering design in the high school level, um, designing solutions for complex real world problems and breaking them down into smaller, more manageable problems. You know, some of this, the curriculum uh, structures for you, so we work through smaller problems and then put those together. Um, but certainly, this is how students get used to these ideas is by experiencing them in real life. For Virginia standards of learning, uh, again, we have reading standards that are, are uh, part of the curricula. This is group work, convincing arguments, class presentations, and making and revising predictions. Uh, getting comfortable with being incorrect is honestly a big part of students' experience with uh, engineering, with this fleet curriculum. And it's not that it's okay to be wrong, but it's okay to hypothesize and revise and students get used to the difference between uh, being incorrect in this scientific struggle for new knowledge. F uh, from a science perspective, uh, there are physical science and sixth grade standards that are directly at play here, but the process standards are really critical. Uh, here you can see the sixth grade process standard. Um, you know, a method devised to test the validity of predictions and inferences is, is a huge aspect of this game. But really, especially if you have norms that data will be collected, recorded, and analyzed, if this is just part of your classroom routine, this is a great way so that science classrooms can c handle the traditional topics and vocabulary, and this fleet curriculum can handle this process part and get students used to using data, model, simulations, applications. In high school, it's the same. Uh, in physics, there are uh, obviously a ton of overlap, uh, similar to the NGSS overlap, but with motion forces. Uh, and again, we have this uh, design process um, standard. So looking at components of a system, there's so many components of these ships and students have different opportunities to go in different ways. Uh, observing and measuring, there's a lot of data that you can collect and students will need to record a lot of that. Um, 
figuring out what you can test well in the simulator and then using this as a technology um, where there's not a lot of, you know, there's certainly some great physics simulator out there and this is another one that adds to that. For Florida, the in the middle school, with big ideas 12 and 13 are motion and forces and changes in motion and again with this reading standards we have this the speaking and listening uh, with the group work and the sharing and the organized presentations I wanted to highlight the big ideas here just because they talk about the practice of science uh, with argumentation being a necessary part and using observation to build knowledge and then the second big idea is the characteristic of scientific knowledge. So the fact that it's based on evidence, that it's durable, but also open to change. You know, this is a great way where as you're having these conversations over 10 lessons or, or whatever length you're able to have your curriculum in class or after school, you know, students get used to understanding that science has a strong foundation but is always striving and moving. At the high school level, uh, standard 12 is where primarily the curriculum lines into the motion. There's also some energy alignments. But again, we see in standard one the practice of science and getting used to investigating these forces and then the characteristics of scientific knowledge. So, the, you know, it, it aligns to the content of the science standards, but it also really emphasizes these crucial big ideas that are baked into the science standards. In Pennsylvania at middle school, uh, there, are, there are specific engineering design standards. Uh, I thought that these three clusters really focus on the aspects of engineering that fleet shows well. So the scope, actually doing the design, and abilities for a technological world. There's still a lot of science alignments, including these uh, unifying themes like explain how physics principles underlie everyday phenomena in important technologies which is a you know just a real central component to what fleet is able to show for students we still have the reading uh, comprehension and collaboration and collaborative discussions and there's also a lot of econ economic ties uh, you have a budget of two million dollars which sounds like a lot but goes very quickly in the game the, the limited resources, opportunity costs, um, and even when you're flying the helicopter, the limited resources come back comes back to get you sometimes. For Pennsylvania high school alignment, again the same four subjects. Uh, there's also an engineering design process highlighted in the definition. So in the first slide, we referenced a Massachusetts Department of Education uh, diagram. And here is just another definition from Pennsylvania. Again, all of these work for different groups. It's really finding one that works for you. Uh, defining a problem, generating ideas, and testing a solution are really you know, part of what f you get into right away with fleet and then it's going through this iteratively and then finally communicating with others and presenting those results are critical components of all of the uh, lessons that deal with fleet and with the hands-on science. So enough with alignment. Let's zoom in back out to just what is this fleet curriculum? It's a lot of hands-on science. So in some of these lessons, you're making steadier boats, you're studying what buoyancy is, you're recording different forces from simulators, uh, you're looking at how to make the most buoyant boat possible. Um, so students are able to work in water containers uh, or a sink it doesn't have to be big. It can be a coffee cup. It can be a small quote-unquote boat. Um, whatever works well for your situation. But the idea is that they get their hands wet uh, a little bit, uh, but get to experience these forces and see how these science concepts play out. And these lessons describe for the instructor uh, just one way to do it, and there's certainly ways that you could deviate from that. Um, but it really walks you through it step by step. 
Similarly, with the engineering design, the what's our process lesson is what I discussed for, earlier about uh, helping to make sure that you find an engineering design process that works well for your group, uh, but not starting totally lost at sea, having a good example to work from. And then when this working on a ship lesson is about uh, theoretically talking about how to work on an impossibly heavy boat, how to work on the hull and designing a solution for that. Um, in that lesson, it's great if the students can work in a sink because the, the best design solution is actually to pull the drain out of the sink. So that creates a dry dock where in a dry dock they pump the water out. You could do that in the sink. Um, and we talk about some ways to combine different probable answers that your groups will come up with to get a great solution that combines different elements. Uh, which is always something that you might have to bring to the table a little bit more, but helps students see that all the groups are contributing. Even if one group had a bigger breakthrough than others, there's ways to improve upon designs even um, when one looks pretty good. Uh, designing to make sure that boats aren't able to sink. So in lesson three, uh, you're able to list as many different ways that you can sink a boat and then in lesson four you try to design a solutions to all those ways so these lessons work well together and help build understanding over time the search and rescue lesson is a theoretical one where you design a good solution to how to re rescue shipwrecked sailors uh, so students can conceive of different technologies that should be used in that situation because the mission that students will use in the next lesson is the search and rescue mission. Uh, so these lessons all are using the engineering design process either in a very hands-on science way, working towards a very online engineering uh, technology way with uh, some connective tissue of some classroom discussions about things that are very true to life uh, that they can design solutions for theoretically. Um, and if you have the ability to either have them in the library do research or allow them to use phones because it's an after school club, you know, there's certainly ways that they can tie in their own materials. So for the extra literacy resources, we're adding more of these, let's say about every other week. Uh, we have biographical interviews that we um, do at ASNI and we're using them as source material for uh, reading passages aligned to generally two, possibly three grades. We highlight the academic vocabulary as you can see on the example on the right. We ask questions that are critical to understanding the text and we also ask students to identify which section or which paragraph has the answers for their information so they get used to these text dependent questions and get used to citing the answers. Uh, mathematically we have a few worksheets right now I'd say most of them are really at the middle school level um, working with um, some circle geometry doing some budget information, uh, we have some, some fractional and some proportional reasoning worksheets, uh, and this is a resource that we really hope to build out over the next couple months so that it can show real world examples, so when you get the question of when will I ever use this, you have one perfect example. So we're still in that first section of four educators, but I wanted to pivot and talk about the grants uh, now. The grant applications, I've received some. We have the opportunity to give out some more. Uh, they're for up to $1,000. We'll give you feedback in about two weeks after we receive your application. So this money can be used to offset uh, technology costs, purchase supplies or materials. Um, that, as you saw with the, the lessons, our curriculum doesn't really require any investment in materials, but if it's something that would help you uh, deal with these scientific concepts better, it's certainly uh, an available option. And also, uh, you know, we know it costs money to have teachers after school, so if you're doing an after school club, need teacher support, um, you know, this money can go to that. As I said, we're accepting them now. If you're having any problems with the grant application, don't stress, just email me, fleet at naval naval <laughs> engineers.org. 
and you can get access to that contact us button at fleetengineering.org. Um, but reach out. Don't don't worry about that. We're also the people that evaluate these grant applications. We'd rather you get through this as quickly as possible so that you can focus on the STEM work that you're doing day in and day out. Uh, the overarching idea is that we want to make sure that you have a plan on how to spend this money and it aligns with one of the three goals listed above and we need to know which organization we should pay. So we can't write a check to an individual but any type of organization that is engaged in this work and I know that we have uh, traditional teachers on the phone right now, Boy Scout leaders, uh, after school program leaders, uh, student uh, teachers and um, instructors engaged with uh, naval activities. So we have a wide range of groups and we encourage all of you to apply. And please don't please please reach out if you have any questions about this. So now we're on to the fleet forum. The fleet forum is something that you may not have used much in the past. But you, if you've downloaded Fleet, you already have a login. You're at, the login you create it to uh, get on the website is the same one you use for Fleet for the forum. Uh, if you don't have your password, just use the Send My Password. It's very simple to get back in it. If you have any problems, again, just email me. But overall, what we're looking to do is we can, you can see the forums listed here. Announce new things. Uh, if you have any bugs that you'd like a report, you can send them in. If you have any feedback about some usability problems that you had, you can send them in also there. We have a discussion board that helps uh, general topics about Fleet, and the Fleet Exchange is set up more for sharing either resources that really worked well for you or celebrating um, successes. We have a, a award ceremony as the 10th lesson in all the curriculum just so that students can be can celebrate different aspects of what they're good at. So perhaps you have students that are really good at displaying data or asking inter interesting questions or coming up with novel design solutions. You know these are processes that we can reward without saying that we're getting a participation ribbon. And then we have fleet tutorials. So we'll be adding a lot to that over the course of this month where we take questions that we've been asked before and put in uh, answers here. So the announcements will have new additions to the game. The bug reporting has your problems and, and it can be a good way to look for FAQs about the game. And the fleet tutorial will have more of our support uh, addressing concerns that we've had before. So here is the reporting and game feedback right now. You can see that there's topics. You go in there, it's, it looks almost like an email. Uh, you have a title, you describe what you're seeing, you can upload a picture if you want, and then we get back to you as soon as possible. And usually it'll be either me or one of the programmers or someone at Navitech uh, getting back to you with solutions for any bugs that you see. The forum is a great way for us to share events that are happening. Um, it'll also be a place where you can share uh, learning resources that you found useful or any feedback that you have on the lessons. The tutorials will have you know, important things like when to use full screen option and how to use it. This was a critical resource for me a couple Saturdays ago because it was displaying differently but um, Margaret, Maggie had a great solution online. I was able to read it, get my solution right here, and get back to work without having to wait for an email. So this is a great place to check first if you're running into any issues. And then software updates. And this is actually one from a couple days ago where uh, we were describing about how we've made it so that you can get to the part of the game that you're most interested in. So when you're in lesson six or seven and you're really trying to test out different solutions to search and rescue, you can go straight there. It gives you the options to do that. There's different uh, ways to get to the information at the mission level. Uh, one thing that I'd like to highlight here and do highlight on the forum is if you don't know what a word is, if a student doesn't know what a word is, there are hover hints. So if you put your mouse over it, a definitional pop-up. And one thing that we'll be building uh, in January is a fleet word wall, which is a vocabulary device so that students can uh, create diagrams that show these words. And uh, we'll have a great glossary uh, in addition to these hover hints. 
but obviously she she listed all of the deployments recently here uh, so it's a great place to check especially towards the beginning of month the month is generally when we release any updates so my contact information is here it's also on the last slide so as I said fleet at naval engineers.org you can email us anytime or if you just need to come and get some of these resources if you put in fleet engineering.org it'll redirect you right to our website downloading fleet uh, I, I encourage you to do it uh, especially if you know you're going to start a club in January this is a great uh, just thing to play around with on your own time so that it it's actually fun it doesn't take that long to get into but as as you know if you spend a half hour with a program before you're working with it in front of students it'll just work a lot easier when you are working in front of students so you create an account on the website you download fleet you complete the purchasing procedure there will be a link that appears and then you download the installer. Sometimes that link doesn't appear, but you can just open the link in a new tab and then it appear, it'll download the installer. Uh, the installer has prompts like everything does today. It's really simple to go through there clicking next and making sure it's putting these in places that you're comfortable with. And then you launch the game. And I would suggest you start with quick play mode. Uh, the speed test is theoretically a straight shot, but the waves will they get you. So you need to you'll get used to some of the physics at play in the game. And then this is a new addition. We we're going to have two new additions to the website. This is the first one. The Mission HQ really describes the objectives. So thinking from an engineering design process, you get your design objectives, and then you can get into the imagining, researching, planning phase. Uh, but you could come here first as a way to get all the details on each of the missions uh, if you're not getting into the logbook easily. The logbook also has all this information and so if you just want to stay within the game you don't need to use the website. It's there. Just we had some feedback that people could use another resource. So we're about at the end. Again I encourage you to email me if you have any questions or concerns that came up during this uh, presentation. I look forward to working with you. Um, just to put a bow on it, the reasons that we're doing this is to advance the knowledge and practice of naval engineering. So we're trying to get students used to working with this engineering design process. It's part of the standards in the states that we discussed today and, and most likely all of the states across the country because we know STEM is so critical. And we're trying to find that next generation of naval engineers. And we know that um, our students responded very honestly to that survey, but this game uh, really preps them for STEM and thinking about STEM as a possible career. And it also it helps them look at naval engineering as a possible career path. And we think that some of these aspects are really critical to that um, those findings that we get experimental designs students are using the technology using a real-life simulator to get used to that uh, it's very authentic stem the application of what can be some esoteric physics and math and engineering concepts is very real to life and students are receiving it in a way that they work with the environment a lot which is the video game world uh, encourage because everything is free the curriculum is free the games free everything is free and the grants are to help uh, any school use this material uh, we're really trying to reach out to every student across the country no matter what their situation is uh, again the game model is a very effective way to reach students today using design build and test approach everything's free and so I'd like you to just consider what your next step is. You know, you could discuss it with someone who wasn't here today uh, when you're grabbing coffee at Starbucks tomorrow. Uh, you could download it and just give it a shot and see how you like it. Uh, I'd encourage you to apply for the mini grant uh, sooner rather than later if that's one of your options. Uh, if you could use some supplemental resources but not the whole thing, we certainly have them be releasing more. If you just want to email me and uh, stay in touch with our program as we add more events and add more pro um, aspects to the solution, 
you know, certainly just email me at fleet at navalengineers.org. And I encourage you to share your stories just both um, on our fleet forum if possible, but just word of mouth uh, spreading that would really help us out because we're really excited by what we have here and we're just trying to get the word out more widely. So here's my contact information. I'll leave this slide up for a, a minute or so. Um, again, certainly email me with any questions. But that is all the information we have tonight. I really appreciate you holding on and uh, hanging out with us. Have a great evening. Thank you.